Springboks vs Wallabies this Saturday afternoon at Suncorp Brisbane, sold out stadium. It doesn't get better than that. Springboks haven't beaten the Wallabies at in Suncorp since 2013. Wallabies are unbeaten this year under new coach Joe Schmidt. With real hope and energy within the squad, Springboks coming into this one at number one rugby nation in the world and haven't won the rugby championship since 2019. If they want to change that this year, best way to go about that is winning this weekend versus the Wallabies. It's going to be huge and I can't wait for it. Before we get into it, hit that subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Who's going to win this one? How is it going to be won? What do you think about the teams that are named? Let me know in the comments. Let's get into it. So as I'm recording this, only the Springboks have released the team. And Russ has made a number of changes to his squad from, the, obviously from the Portugal game, but a number of changes from the Irish series. So looking at the starting squad, so he got Oxenchair up front, Bongi Mbunambi and Franz Malarba, uh, Eben Etzebeth and Erge Sneeman in the second row in the locks, Sia Kulisi captain with Peter Steff de Toy and Ulrich Lowe at eight. Big changes here for me. Kubus Reinach at nine and Sasha Feinberg and Gumuzulu gets the starting spot at fly off at number 10. How good. Super excited for that. Uh, centers Damien Dallander and Jesse Creel. Um, back three of Kirtley Aronsa, Cheslin Colby, and Vili Leroux. Bomb squad of Malcolm Marx, Gerard Stenerkamp, Vincent Koch, BJ, Ben Jason Dixon, Marco van Staden, Kwaka Smith. Grant Williams and Andre Pollard. Oh man, what a team, what a squad, what a team. I love that Rossi has given someone like Sasha Feinberg and Gumuzulu the chance, the opportunity to start. All of his games that he's played for the Springboks has been off the bench and he's been unreal every opportunity he's got. And he's been given that start. Another Another player that every like I said, every opportunity he's got is shown his class, but also another way of Rossi going like, let's test our depth, let's really test these guys, let's throw them in the deep end and let's see how they go. Every like I said, every opportunity he's got, he's been unreal. He hasn't got a starting spot yet. He's been giving a starting spot for this. Spring box against the Wallabies in Brisbane, where they haven't won since 2013. It's 11 years. And Rossi's like, hey, yeah, yeah, you get your first starting spot. Let's see what you can do. I love, I love that, man. Let's see what you can do. And he's, yes, he's gone for the 6 2 split, but on the bench, so you've got Grant Williams and Henry Pollard who've been there and done it. If shit hits the fan, let's put, we'll put these guys on and let's see how we go. What? Sasha Gomuzulu is going to learn from this far outweighs what could go wrong. Because either way, if he has a not so good game, then he learns like, holy shit, this is what it takes to start for the Springboks, the best in the world. And if it goes good, Rossi's sitting there smiling. We've got three top class fly offs that can do a job for us. And going forward, Gomuzulu is 20, 21, 22. He's got another 10, 13, 14 years on him. Um, so do love that. I love Arches Neyman starting as well. Um, and then on the bench, they've gone with Ben, ben Jason Dixon who can cover uh, lock, he can cover the back row. And then having the thought of having Marco von Staden and Kwaha Smith, that could, they could both come on at the same time. Scary, scary, scary stuff. Obviously, Grant Williams will then cover nine and wing. Then Andre Pollard can pretty much fly off center, fullback. Quacha Smith on the wing if he has to be. Oh, man, how good. Like I said, um, Wallaby's team hasn't been announced yet. So just speaking on the Springboks team, really, really exciting stuff there. And I'm doing a little preview here. So where I think the game will be won or lost. And a few dot points down. And yeah, let's... Let's let's get into it. Set piece, I think, will be massive. Scrums and lineouts will be crucial. Springboks known for their strong scrum. 
dominance in that area. Uh, do love love to scrum whether it's your where it's opponent's ball or their own ball. They love to scrum. Can the Wallabies hold on there? Uh, do they have any tricks up their sleeve? Like it's the dark arts, man. If you think you know everything about scrums, you're probably lying. Or you haven't read all of the rules, man, because who knows what happens up front there. Um, a big question will be have to be answered by the Wallabies when Springboks do decide to change their whole forward pack because they've gone with a 6-2 split. Can Wallabies then kind of match that? Can they have had their, their checkmate, so to speak? Um, also, no lineouts are going to be crucial. The Springboks' new attack shape that they've been throwing has predominantly been off the back of a good lineout. Can the Wallabies disrupt their lineout? Can the Wallabies enforce their own way of playing through their lineout? They got a strong maul, um, and so do the Springboks. Springboks are known, obviously, up front for their set piece. So can the Wallabies match that? But can they also enforce their set piece onto the Springboks? Because man, if you don't have a lineout or you don't have a scrum, it's really hard to play rugby or to enforce your style, your attacking style onto opposition. And, and Wallabies do have that. They, under Joe Schmidt, love to run the ball, love to play attacking footy. Um, so can they do that versus the Springboks? So I think kicking game is going to be instrumental. So your territory game where you can, who can kick best to pin teams down the field, um, finding grass, 50-22 sort of stuff, a khaki, a, sorry, attacking style kicks, so not just kicking the ball to get rid of it, but a kicking to try and get the ball back. We've seen Jake Gordon with his box kicks um, and like wing, Australian wingers coming through to put pressure on the opponents that way. Um, I think exits will be super important. It always is. Teams seem to score points and then really struggle to get out of their own half where they'll give away points straight away from scoring or um, allow teams to just get back on, get right under pressure straight away. So that's going to be a big facet of the game, whether that's kicking exits from box kicks or from 10 or 10 giving to 15 to exit that way. And that's where someone like Vili LaRue comes in. He's got the left boot and gumuzulu has got a strong, strong boot. And then Kubus Reinach has got a good box kick as well. And Wallabies, on the other hand, will look at guys like if Jake Gordon is starting strong box kicker, Noah Lolasio kicks well out of hand, and then Tom Wright kicks well out of hand as well. And then obviously penalties and conversions, super important. Gumuzulu has shown what he can do from 50, 55 meters out. He can kick his points. Noah Lolasio has been a bit up and down with his kicks, but when he's on song, he can strike the ball really well. And then lastly, I think it's gonna, where the game's going to be won or lost is in defense slash scoring points, taking opportunities. Um, we know both teams can score points. They can both score tries. Both can kick their goals. But it's who can who can make their tackles, man. Springboks for the past few years have worked have done really well with their rush defense, uh, led by Jesse Creel. Strong, strong defenders, really communicating well across that defensive line, getting up, making strong one on one tackles. And then from there, counter-rucking or slowing the opposition's ball down. Wallabies one-on-one tackles will be super important. I thought against Wales, they let in a lot, a lot of points um, where they just knock. That you can't afford that against a team like South Africa because they're just going to keep running points on you. And their defense is really strong, so they're not going to let you score many points. Um, and then taking opportunities, there's not going to be many. So when you do get the opportunity, you need to score those points. So I think early on, you'll see lots of kicking a goal. Guys just want to build that scoreboard pressure, but then it could loosen up a bit. I've see, we've seen what the Wallabies can do from on their own line. Some of the guys given free reign, I feel like, to play what's in front of you. If the chip kick is on, do a chip kick five meters from your own line. Let's play. And they're, they're back three, which I think will be some, like, look the likes of Tom Wright, Filippo Dongunu and Marika Korobedi, I think will be their back three. Man, give them a little bit of space and they're scoring points or they're making a lot of meters or at least setting up, um, or putting the Wallabies in a good position to score points. But the same goes for South Africa's back three. So you've got Kirkley Oranset, Ches and Colby, Vili LaRue, 
how the Springboks are playing with their new attack shape, drawing the opposition in to create space for their wingers out wide. And you've got guys like that out wide. They don't need much space, man. They're going to score points or run, make a lot of meters and, and, and put South Africa in a position to score points. Vili Leroux, I feel like just that magician at the back, man, really pokes his head in where it needs to be a um, good uh, communicator and his assists, man, those skip balls or popping up in the right place to put a little pop pass in or a little chip kick in or just that, oh, man, you can just watch him a little bit at the back there communicating, telling guys what to do, where to go, uh, what, what runs to run, what decoy runs out the back, the chip kicks, the short pot, all of that. Valeru is all over that in that regard. So both for me, both – Teams back threes, get them the ball early and get them into the game early and um, it could be beneficial for both sides. Oh, man, in saying this, South Africa hasn't, Springboks haven't won in Brisbane since 2013. Wallabies looking a lot better under Joe Schmidt, a lot of buy-in from the players on how they want to play. But Springboks are number one in the world. I think it's going to be a tight game. But I do see Springboks winning this one. Probably about eight, eight to ten points in a strong game. Can't wait for it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.